It was a mess. But Coyote said, well, let's look for some arrows in here. And so they started digging through a pile, and they found a handful of arrows, and they brought them out, and they said, well, grab it. This one's broken. This one doesn't have a point on it, and what's the point of having an arrow with no point? And they kept looking, and they found, finally found five arrows. They had good points. The fletching was good. They were straight. Yeah, those will work. And they said, well, now you need your bow. Where's your bow, rabbit? Oh, I don't know, said Rabbit. It's around here somewhere. And so off they went, looking around in all the little places that were hidden around Rabbit's house. And they found a bow. And they pulled it out. And they said, try this out. And Rabbit took the bow and he pulled back it, but he didn't straight. straight. <laughs> well, he said, have you got another one, Rabbit? He says, I think so. There's some one around here somewhere. So they were looking some more. And they found another bow and they pulled it out and they pulled back the string. And when he did, the bow snapped. Well, Rabbit, have you got any more? Rabbit said, I think there's one. Yes, here it is. And he pulled out his long bow. And it was made out of strong bodark. And I don't know if you've ever seen a bodark tree. They don't grow around here, but they grow some places. And they have a good, straight bow and wonderful arrows. So Rabbit took that bow and he pulled back the string, and it was good. The wood was springy, the string was strong. So they said, yes, we're ready. So the next morning early, before the sun came up, the four friends went climbing up the side of the mesa. And when they got there, they sat down to wait to see when the sun would come up. And just as those rosy fingers of dawn came up, the rabbit put the arrow in the bow, pulled back the string, and Avery had seen the sun come up the day before. He let the arrow fly, and he missed. Well, he said, the sun was in my eyes. <laughs> Anybody could miss. Oh, well, Coyote howled. He tried not to laugh, but it came out more like a laugh than a howl. And Cactus Red said, oh, my, what did you do? What did you do? You missed, you missed, you missed. What did you do? And Horn Lizard went and crawled under a rock. He was so embarrassed. And Rabbit said, the sun was in my eyes. I'll get it tomorrow. Tomorrow's another day. So the next morning, off they went again. Rabbit took an arrow out of the quiver, put it in the bow, pulled back the string. He aimed where he had seen the sun come up the day before, and when the sun came leaping up, Rabbit let the arrow fly, and he missed again. Well, Coyote decided that he was going to sleep late the next morning, so he wasn't going to go. And Cactus Wren said she had some place she had to be, so she wasn't going to go. And Horn Lizard just stayed under the rock. He didn't even want to think about getting up early the next day. So Rabbit was stomping around. Now, have you ever been so upset and angry that you stomped around? I know I have once in my life. I was really, really angry, and I stomped around, and I thought I was just, you know, snuffling and snuffling and angry as all get out. And then I stopped, and I thought about it, and I thought, hmm, this isn't getting me anywhere. And that's what Rabbit did. He sat down. And he started to think. And he was looking at the horizon where he'd seen the sun come up each day. And he said, I see what that sun is doing every day. He's coming up just a little ahead of where he came up the day before. I've got him now. Oh, -ho. so the next one, <laughs> Rabbit went out and he was ready. He got that arrow out of the quiver and he put it in the bow and he pulled back the string and he held it so taut. And just as the sun came leaping out of the sky, he aimed just a little ahead of where the sun had come up the day before. And he let the arrow fly, and it went right into the side of the sun. And fire began to bleed and chase Rabbit. And Rabbit began to run. Remember, I said he could run really fast. And he was running and running and running and running. And running and, oh, the fire was getting closer. And he was running and running. And off in the distance, he saw a yucca tree. And he said, oh, yucca tree, help me. Hide me, save me, please. I'll shot the sun at the fire. Oh, the fire's after me, and I need help. Oh, no, I can't help you, said yucca tree. She stood up straight, straight and tall, and she said, if I help you, that fire would burn me, too. I think I'd better keep on running. Oh, <laughs> Rabbit, oh, he kept on running, and he was running, and running. Oh, his feet were tired, and he had a little tough fire was getting closer, and off in the distance, he saw a creosote bush. And he said, oh, creosote, help me, hide me, save me, please, I'll shut the sun, and the fire's out to be night, and help, oh, help! And the creosote bush said, oh, no, Rabbit, I can't help you. If I do, that fire will burn me, too. You'd better keep on running. And old poor Rabbit, he was really exhausted. And he could hardly put one leg in front of the other. But he was desperate because that fire was getting closer. 
And off in the distance, he saw a clump of prickly pear cactus, full of beautiful purple tunas. And he said, oh, cactus, can you help me hide these things? Can you chop this fire up to me? I need help. And cactus said, quick, grab it, dig down under my roots. And oh, cactus. <laughs> Rabbit dug down as fast as he could, and the fire came roaring over the top and raced out across the desert. And Rabbit came out and he said, Oh, Cactus, you saved my life. Mm. Uh, but he looked at Cactus, and all of those nice green pads and tunas had shriveled up. And the thorns from Cactus were sticking out. And she said, That's what friends are for, Rabbit. When you're in trouble, you call your friends. And if you call me, nobody's going to bother you because I'm going to put out my thorns and say, if you want this rabbit, you got to come through me, bud. And so I think this rabbit has been a timid, scared fellow. And at the first sign of trouble, he runs and hides under the closest cactus he can find. And if you travel out to the great western desert, and you look at those mountains, you can still see where they're scorched red and black from the fire. And the plants grow very short because they don't want to get burned by the fire. And that sun, oh, that sun, when he comes up in the morning, he looks left and he looks right before he very carefully climbs up into the sky and begins his careful, safe walk across. And that is the end of this story. Now, if you get up, and I keep telling yeah. this, this would be a great science fair experiment. Have any of y'all done a science fair experiment yet? If you're going into third, fourth, or fifth grade, your teacher's going to tell you that, but probably the second week of school. Boys and girls, we're going to do a science fair experiment. And you can say, I've already done mine. And the teacher's jaw will drop. And she'll give you an A right away. And this is what you can do. You can either do this online or look and see what time the sun comes up every day because there's a place you can go, the U.S. Naval Observatory website, and they tell you every day of sunrise and sunset, every day of moonrise and moonset. <coughs> and you go out, if you stand at your house and you watch where the sun comes up in the morning, and maybe there's a utility pole or a palm tree or something that helps you see, okay, today the sun comes up over here, the next day it came up over here, the next day it came up over here, and the next day it came up over here. That gives you something to record for your data collecting. And this is what happens. Because the Earth is tilted on huh? its axis, and our planet is traveling around the sun all the time, there are certain times of the year when we have equal hours of daylight and equal hours of darkness. And that's the first day of spring and the first day of autumn. So we have 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night. But from the first day of spring until the first day of summer, the sun comes up a little bit north of east every day until the first day of summer when it stops and stands. So that was why last Friday was called the summer solstice. And from that point on, the sun comes up a little bit further down until the first day of autumn when it's 12 and 12. Then it starts coming up south of the uh, west. And so it doesn't climb very high this time. So we don't have very many hours of daylight. And that's why it is. It's not really because the sun got shot out of the sky. <laughs> but it's a good story. And that's the fun thing about science. You can tell stories about science. And um, I'm not sure exactly what time the night hike is supposed to start. It might be so cold. <laughs> We can do one more story if you want, because they're not going to start until 8.45. Want to know, have another story? Oh, sure. Okay. And um, here's your copy of the story so how the stars came to be in the sky, I need you kids and anybody who feels like a kid to imagine you're some kind of um, an animal. So imagine you're some kind of an animal. Oh, I'm a rat. You're 
a page. And this is a story, this, this story not from out west U.S., but north, northeast Native Americans like to tell this story. And they called the uh, they called their spirit money too. And Money Chu was a gigantic warrior with a long headdress of eagle feathers, and his robe was white and it was decorated with bees, and he was the creator of all things. Now, Money Chu created Coyote, and Coyote was, you know, he was like rabbit. He was a bright eagle. No, anything you can do, I can do better. And this particular day, Rabbit and Coyote, again, those are always the main, pretty much always the main characters in these stories. Rabbit and Coyote are walking in the morning, sun is shining and bright, and, 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 and Coyote says, I don't know why Money Chu gave us a, a light for the day. We need a light for the night. By the way, you know there's something wrong with 